It's great to see that there are actually people here who lasted after six o'clock. So for those of you who came along, thank you very much. Um, my name is Matt Sullivan. I'm a developer advocate at Google. I've been working on Flutter for about a year now. So before we start, just a show of hands, who has really heard about Flutter at this point? And how many of you have actually written some Flutter code? Oh, okay, a few. So what I'm going to do today is 30 minutes is not a lot of time to do justice to uh, what you can do with Flutter. So I'm going to briefly go through some slides to give some foundational pieces. And then instead of talking about how we built the Vox Days app with Flutter, I thought what I'd do instead is actually try to build some of the functionality that we have in there from scratch because that's a thing that you do um, with live coding with a network. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and show you the experience of Flutter. So let's dive in. What is Flutter? Well, Flutter lets you build things like this. It is an SDK for building um, apps in iOS and Android. And as you can see, the apps that you see there, three of them are in production. Um, one of them is a demo app that we built for the, with the house to show uh, just the flexibility of the UI. But all of them do not look like you're out of the box Apple or material design app. They all have very distinct looks. And one of the core tenets of Flutter is this customizability of UI across both devices. So Flutter lets you build apps. It lets you, as I said, um, really play around with the UI. It's supposed to be fast, fluid, and ultimately flexible. We use a reactive pattern, which you're going to see when I start to throw some code around. It natively compiles on both iOS and Android. And by natively, I mean it compiles down to machine code. So it's ARM machine code that's going to those devices. And we have a big emphasis on tooling because we can give you the greatest SDK on the planet and not you provide you with effective IDE tooling, and it's going to make your experience miserable. So we made sure that we have a good story on the tooling side as well. The reason that Flutter lets you do such customizability across both platforms is that Flutter renders its own UI. It uses Skia um, as the renderer, which means that none of the UI components you see in Flutter are actually rendered by the uh, Android or iOS SDKs. An app bar is not an Android app bar. It is not an iOS equivalent app bar. It is Flutter's rendering of those pieces which means as a team, we have built a whole set of widgets out of the box, which gives you both material design and iOS, what we call Cupertino widgets, effective representations um, of those. And that allows us to do very clever things in terms of controlling how things are rendered. And it also gives you great flexibility to dive in and change how things are drawn, because again, we're not going to the platform. We're giving you the tool set to be able to modify those. Final real quick point is that Flutter um, ha is abstracted out of iOS and Android. We have an engine embedder. And what that means is that we can generate engines for other platforms. We have an unofficial one for Mac OS. And I know that there are people looking at doing things like Windows and other platforms as well. So we're focusing on Flutter for mobile at the moment with iOS and Android. But that doesn't preclude Flutter running on other form factors, on other operating systems in the future. The entire UI is built on the Dart language. Um, again, you'll see me throw a bunch of... Has, does any, is anyone familiar with Dart and written Dart here? Okay, a few. For those of you who don't know Dart, knowing Java, it should feel very, very familiar. And the important thing here is that you can see our UI stack from where we basically start to paint pixels on the screen to those final material and Cupertino widgets are all written in Dart, which means you have access to very legible source code, and you can dive in at any of those levels and start to modify what you display on screen. It gives you really great flexibility. Our UI is not laid out using XML or some other markup style language. It's actually laid out in the code itself which is controversial um, in some ways, but hopefully when you see me start to actually write some code, you'll get a flavor for why um, the engineers who worked in this project went down that route, because it feels very natural once you start to use it. Again, because you have access to the Dart code, you've got the full documentation at your fingertips. You can go to our website, or you can just browse um, the source code yourself. We compile down to machine code. We go from Dart to basically ARM machine code, which can then interface with any particular iOS or Android um, code you have as well. It basically means that we are running on the metal and we are very, very fast. But we also are able to leverage the Dart virtual machine. And what this means is we can use a compile to machine code for release, but we can utilize a VM when we're doing debugging. 
And this gives us things like near instantaneous updates when we make code changes, which is what we call hot reload. So we get the boast of both worlds. We get a really good developer experience, but we also then give you something that isn't interpreted, isn't jitted or anything else. It is actually running um, uh, on, on the device at the machine code level. For those of you who have like done debugging, built an APK and found it's 35 meg in size and gone, well, that's a, that's a deal breaker. That is because we're shipping the full VM and everything else into the debug um, system. But when we do a release build, we strip out the VM, none of that has to go in. And so our base builds today are starting at about 4.78 meg on Android for Hello World. And that's down from about six meg two or three months ago. So we're continuing to shave off of that. So there is, you know, some foundational pieces we need to push. Um, and we're getting close to the theoretical minimum that we can get it down to, but we're getting it lower and lower um, at the moment. And finally, we have great support for Android Studio and Visual Studio Code and also um, IntelliJ. We have a full CLI that lets you do everything from the command line if you so desire as well. We have hot reload baked into those IDEs. And we have a full-blown package manager if people are familiar with things like NPM or whatnot. We have the equivalent. And the package system already has eight or nine years of constant Dart development in there. And while Flutter's only been around for a couple of years, there's already a great repository of packages, some of which are built by us. Um, and it continues to expand every day. And then finally, you do not have to write everything in 100% Dart. If you have Kotlin, Java, Objective-C, or Swift, you're able to link into that code via platform channels to give the ability to communicate between the two. And sure, if you start to communicate with um, Android-specific or iOS-specific code, you're going to lose that cross-platform piece. But a lot of people out there have already built their business logic for both platforms. So you can still utilize that and then use Flutter on the front end. OK. So I've given you a super quick tour. What I want to do is actually play around with some code and see how far we get and how well this can go. So what I want to do is I want to go and hit the um, DevOps APIs, pull back some conference data, and display it on the screen. What I have here is I have a very basic um, Hello World app. Um, I'm using um, things like Material App and Scaffold here. They're just giving me some handy frameworks in which to build it. But let's take a look. My main app runs this DevOps widget. And then inside that widget, I'm creating a Material App, which is a scaffold. And then I'm centering, and I have some text. And already, I want to get the point across that if you take nothing away from here, everything is a widget. My text is a widget. That makes sense. It's a UI component. Center isn't really a UI component. It's more layout. But it is also considered a widget. And the way that you build UIs in Flutter is you compose widgets together into a widget tree that represents your UI. So for example, I can go in here, and I can change this to something like this. I can save it, and it immediately changes on the other side. And that's where we get this idea of hot reload. This is in debug mode. There's a Dart VM running within the application itself, and it is taking Dart, which is pushed over as soon as I, I hit save. So the first thing I don't like about this is this doesn't have an app bar. So let's add one. We can see here we have a scaffold. OK, and that takes a whole bunch of things. One of them is an app bar. And I can give it an app bar, which is a widget, because everything is a widget. Now, what can I put in this app bar? Well, I could go and look in the web, or what I can do is I can just go to its definition. And I have immediate access to the source code here for an app bar written by the engineers in Flutter, because all of them are available. And I've got all the documentation, and I've got sample code. But let's go in and see. I can do a bunch of things here. But it takes a title. OK. So let's go in here and give this a title. I'll need to give it text, because everything is a widget. And I'm going to make this DevOps. Here we go. So we have an app bar. Wonderful. Right. What I want to do now is let's go and let's say I can get a list of um, uh, conferences. So I have created um, a couple of helper methods. The first is this conference data object, for want of a better word. Very straightforward. You can pretty much see it's got some names. It's got some URLs. That's fine. I have a handy J JSON parsing object here because nobody wants um, to watch me spend 10 minutes writing JSON parsing code, um, I hope. Um, and I have here all the code needed in Flutter to be able to do a network call. So let's take a look at what it does. It has a URL. Um, it has a HTTP.get. 
And then at this point, all I'm doing once it comes back is I'm checking the status code, I'm basically turning the JSON into a list of conference objects, or I'm throwing an exception if there is a problem. So one thing to notice here is that I am returning a future. I'm not just returning the list of conferences. And that's because you don't have to worry necessarily about threading or multiprocess or whatnot when you do things that you are worried about running on the UI thread because Dart is asynchronous. And because Dart is asynchronous, I can do things like do an await on this HTTP and then go and do something else. For those of you who have come from JavaScript, this should be fairly familiar. So what this is doing is this is returning a promise to give a list of conferences at some point in the future or potentially blow up and throw an exception. So you don't have to spin up multiple threads or whatnot to handle any of this. You can do it um, here. And if I was, you know, I, I could have had a toy implementation where I had some static list of conferences and I didn't worry about the future. But what I wanted to do was show you proper real world examples and to show you how Flutter can handle that. So now that we know we have this, well, let's play around. How do I actually, um, how do I actually show a list of things in Flutter? Well, okay, in my body, which is here, let's get rid of that um, centered text, and I'm going to put in a list view. Okay, that's good. What does a list view take? It takes a bunch of things, but one of the things it takes is children, which is a list of widgets. So there we go, empty list, we're not showing anything. So let's just generate a list at the moment, and I can use some functional niceness that comes with Dart to generate a list of 20 items. And then for each element of that, I'm going to generate a text widget. And let's just say I put in conference um, with a number. OK, let's save that. There we go. There's 20 elements uh, on the screen. Um, you may notice that when I put in some commas or whatnot, it handily reformats. That is me just utilizing the Dart reformatter. And again, we've made this tooling so it makes your life as easy as possible. You could switch it off, but I find it super useful. Um, that looks okay. Maybe I could put in 200. And for those of you coming from an Android or an iOS side, you know that generating a list, you sometimes have to worry about, is the element on screen? Is it off screen? Should I recycle it or whatnot? But because we're controlling the full rendering system, we actually manage all that behind the scenes for you. You have a list view dot builder if you want to do things dynamically um, and build a list like an infinite scrolling list or something like that. This is a simple one. Notice, however, when I scroll this, I'm running in an, the I, an iOS simulator. And I've got this nice Apple bouncy um, uh, effect. If I was running in an Android emulator or on the device, I would get the inkwell effect. So we're handling the UX of the platform for you under the hood. You don't actually have to take care of that yourself. So this is great. I'm showing a list view, but you know what? This isn't going to work for this because I'm not getting back a list of conferences. I'm getting back a promise to give me a list of conferences. So how am I going to be able to handle that? So let's just take out um, our scaffold here. And I need to be able to handle a future. So handily enough, Flutter comes with a future builder. And what does that do? Well, let's take a look. What this does is... It creates a widget that builds itself based on the latest snapshot of interaction with the future. Okay, so it's going to build itself based on what state my future is in. So the first thing I need to do here is I need to give it the future, which is going to be get conferences from network. Okay, that's great. I also need to pass it a builder. And I'm going to give it a context. And Dart, um, it's strongly typed, but you, the, the type can be inferred. I'm going to put in the type here just because it's going to make more sense when I talk about it. It's going to be an async snapshot of a list of conference. And I'm going to close that off. And then this is going to take some sort of piece here. And of course, I need to give it a name. Snapshot. OK. So what's happening here? Well, my future builder has got a future. It has access to the context, if I could spell properly. And it's got this idea of a snapshot, which is somehow going to handle what's uh, going to give me an idea of where my, um, what state my future is in. So I can go in here and say, for example, if snapshot um, dot has data, then I am going to return. Okay, so my snapshot has data. So my snapshot then dot data is probably going to be 
of type list conference. So there we go, there's my list of conferences. Now, this isn't going to render because remember, everything is a widget, so I'm going to have to do something with this data. So let's get a little more functional again and map my um, list of conferences. And let's, for the time being, let's just send back the conference name as a text. This is still a little upset because this is returning an iterator, so I might have to do this. Uh, let's see, where have I gone wrong here? Translation isn't a widget, it's defined by the anonymous closure. Um, so I'm mapping. I have my list of conferences. I'm mapping to here. And I'm mapping to. Ooh, hang on. That was a bit idiotic. No. Let's see. Um, Right. Return list isn't a widget as defined by anonymous closure. So I've got my snapshot.data. Which is oh, of course. And what I'm doing here is I shouldn't be returning just a list of widgets because it doesn't expect that. What it return expects is a list view. Which is going to provide this. Which is going to go to here. Okay, so what happens when I hit this? My app breaks. It's returning no. Okay, but then it returns um, our, um, our list of widgets, which is unstyled, and I'll tell you why it is unstyled, because I forgot, I accidentally deleted. Um, let's, okay, so let's do this. Let's wrap this in a widget. This is gonna be a scaffold, because I accidentally de my, deleted my scaffold. Put it back in the body. Okay, this is still going to cause me an issue. And notice that it's causing an issue and it's showing me what the problem is, but now we're back to having a list. And why is it doing that? It's doing that because, remember, this is a promise to return the data. So at some point while it's getting the data, I need to give it something. So let's give it some, um, let's give it if there's no data. Let's return a widget that's centered. And there's this handy circular progress indicator. So what happens now when I do this? So let's kick this off again. And now I have a circular progress indicator, which is what I expect. And then my networking here is a little slow. And now I actually have a list of widgets. So this is now actually working, despite my best attempts to foil things by accidentally deleting too much code. Now, the one thing you would also want to do if this was production, and we can do it really quickly here, is what happens if there's an error? Well, we can simply do snapshot dot has error, and then we could do something like return center text, and let's just give it, um, and we show uh, the snapshot error. Okay. So, this may look like um, complicated code, but think about what it's doing. This is handling all aspects of what can happen when you do a network call. You do a network call and the data comes through, it shows the data. You make a network call, you need to do something in the interim, you can do that. It throws an exception, and you can also handle the exception as well. So in about 10 lines of code, I've managed to handle gracefully, I think, all those pieces. So this is great. Flutter is all about beautiful UI. That is not a beautiful UI. So let's fix that. So I'm going to do something a little different now. I'm going to create a new stateless widget, and I'm going to use the IDE to give me the uh, boilerplate. I'm going to call this a conference tile. And in my conference tile, I'm going to give it a constructor, which is going to have a conference. Sounds fine. And I am just going to give it the type. There we go. And it would be helpful if I had the names. So there we go. That's how you do a um, constructor in Dart. Um, well, one of the ways you can do it. And what I'll do now is instead of um, returning a container, I'll return text. And I'll just give my conf.name. OK. So remember, everything is a widget. And you can attach widgets to other widgets. So in here, instead of using the text, why don't I just create a conf tile and pass it that? 
So that's gonna render exactly the same, but this is where the composability comes in. Because I'm using widgets, I can swap them in, I can swap them out um, very, very easily. So let's quickly make this look better. So there is a widget called the list tile. That's great. List tile has a whole bunch of things that I can use. Subtitles, trailing, I can go in, I can look at this, I can play around with them. Um, I am going to give my title, let's just make it that um, uh, conference title uh, name. Okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Well, at least now it's more nicely spaced out. Still looks terrible. Um, let's give it a subtitle. Um, I have no UI design capabilities in my body, so this is a... Uh, being supplied these is great. I, am, I have this handy little function which basically pretty prints a from and a to uh, date time. And conf has um, a from and a to date time. So let's see. Okay, well, that's better. Um, at least now I've got some dates up there. Let's make it a little snazzier. I'll give it a leading. And this leading, I could give it an icon. And that would make it a little more pleasant. There we go. So that's fine. It's not great. Let's be a lot fancier. Let's use a circle avatar. Now my circle avatar gives me just that. That's fine. But what else can I do in here? Well, look, we've got a background image, which comes from an image provider. So let's see, I've got my background image. Um, and that is going to require an image. And what I can do is, again, Flutter has provided this out of the box. It has um, this uh, network image functionality where I can give it a URL. And what that will hopefully do is that's going to go to the network now and it's going to pull down all my images. So I haven't had to do anything to be able to handle imaging, uh, image pulling on the network. Um, this you know, has some clever caching and whatnot in there. This one is very, very slowly loading. Again, the network on my computer is not great at the moment. Um, but great. So I have gone from basically hello world with the help of basically a data class and some code to get um, some JSON data in to having a nice scrolling list and whatnot. Notice that I accidentally deleted my app bar when I did that later earlier on. So let's just put that in again because, you know, it will be nice to have uh, text. And we're going to put in DevOx. Yay, app bar. Woo. Um, and that's great. It doesn't actually do anything useful, though, which is a shame. And I've got seven minutes and 30 seconds left, so let's do that really quickly. This has an ONTAP. An ONTAP takes a closure. What can I do in the ONTAP? Well, I've got this handy launch browser um, uh, function here, which is two lines of code um, using a plugin, which allows us to remotely launch URLs. So can I use that? So can I go launch browser? Oops. And in there, I can give my conference dot, what do we have, site URL? Okay, there we go, so now we can scroll. Oh, there we go, so now I can actually call out and I can call into a browser. This is using Safari's um, browser um, windowless piece here. If this was an Android, it would, use, um, it would use Chrome or windowless Chrome or however I had it. Again, network super slow, so that might take a little while, but if I can find another one. Um, Good. Okay. Let's do one more final thing just because I have a few minutes. There's also in here an on long press. And let's say I want to show let's say I want to show a snack bar on the bottom. How hard is that going to be? Well, I'm using a scaffold which provides a handy function called show snack bar. This is obviously going to take a widget called a snack bar. Uh, what am I missing? I'm missing content, so I'm going to give it some content. And let's just give it uh, the title of the conference just for the sake of it. So now I can click in here um, and eventually when my work, oh, is it going to work this time? There we go. Good. Um, uh, when my network is working, it does that. That's great. Now if I long press, there we go. There's my snack bar. So again, just one line of code. And this isn't like toy code. This isn't prototypical code. This is code that, you know, this is, th this is code that you will use in production. So I have gone and written about 48 lines of code. 
and I've been able to produce this. And hopefully what you've seen, other than my inability to delete the proper code and then cause myself endless amounts of pain, is that it's relatively straightforward and quick and easy to build these. And I have built and I have styled these all inside my code itself, using things like list tiles, using things like list views, and you have access to all the source code here, which means you can look at how these work, you can modify them, and you can create your own as well. So, let's, let's not risk doing any more live coding and quickly jump back to the slides. I wanna do a quickly talk about the Vox Day app. Um, it is an open source Flutter app. Uh, you can get it at devox slash uh, vox app. It's completely written in Flutter. Um, it's got a little bit more functionality than what I just wrote. Um, displaying info, schedules, it's got notifications. Um, it's using a customized tweak material design. And it's using REST, but it's doing the same sort of things that I just did um, uh, uh, here as well. There's no real difference. One of the nice things about this app is that it uses Vox.com to get some data. It uses Confinabox to get more data. But what it also does is it has um, some functionality to locally cache all the conference data there as well. And it will work offline and cold boot with uh, JSON stored. So this is a good example of how to handle local data, how to store local data, how to cache data from the network. Um, it's, a, it's a very nicely written app by my colleague Andrew Brogdon, um, who's done a great job, I think, giving an example of how to write a um, sophisticated Flutter app. Here are some useful links. Flutter is completely open source. If you go to github.com slash flutter slash flutter, you will see the source code for everything. If you go to github.com slash flutter slash engine, you'll see our engine, engine and better, and how to create one. Um, everything we do is through GitHub. You see an issue, file an issue on GitHub. We talk about what's coming up in the roadmap on GitHub. We are completely open source um, uh, under very permissive license. Flutter.io is our website, which recently got a bit of a refresh. Tons of information there um, on creating Flutter apps. There are seven or eight code labs available on Google's um, code lab site at developers. We have a really good cookbook, which gives you recipes for using um, some of these, uh, uh, for, for some common patterns inside of Flutter. Gitter is basically a web-based chat app where our engineers hang out. Um, so you can go and talk to them there. So I will leave it at that and say thank you, and I can answer a few questions while there's a couple of minutes left. Please. How hard is it to? Oh, so to build an APK, if so, um, obviously there's APK written behind the scenes. If I wanted to build an APK here, um, I could just do. Um, Flutter, I know it's really small, but I didn't plan on showing this, build APK. And that's going to go away. It's going to do all the things. It's going to get your signing bits and pieces and put it together. Use Gradle under the hood and basically give you a release base uh, APK. And Flutter build iOS is going to do exactly the same thing. So you'll end up with the, um, the final artifacts to be able to upload to the uh, play of the App Store. So if there are no other questions, it's quarter to seven. I'm sure people are getting hungry now. I just wanted to say thank you very much for your attention. Um, I'll be around for a little bit now, and I'll be around for the next couple of days if you want to chat about um, any of this. Thank you very much.